I would call this because 120 divided by 20 is uh, goes in six times. So I'm getting six to one odds in a call, which is good percentage. I want at least five to one. So I would definitely call this and chase my open at the straight draw. So now there's 140 in the pot. There's seven oranges in there. Turn comes, nine of diamonds, no flush possible still, really no straight possible. I didn't make my hand. Again, the next chance of the, the card, chance of the next card being an ace versus six is about 16%. So I'm getting this, I have the same hand odds, but the pot odds are going to change a little bit. So the pot's 140. We're going to say he bets 30 into the pot. So now he bets 30, the pot's 170. I need 30 chips to call. We're going to do pot odds again. Does 170, or does 30 go into 170 more than five times is what you want to call, is what you need to call a, uh, mathematically to be profitable in the long run by simple odds you need the pot to be at least 150 because 30 times 5 which is 5 to 1 odds is 150 which it is the pot's 170 so mathematically this would be a good call and in the long run is going to profit you even though you're sitting here you know there's only a 16 percent chance that you're going to make your hand you know five or six times he's going to win this hand but mathematically if you're putting in this amount of chips it's going to benefit you in the long run. If you play the hand six times, he's going to win it five times. You're going to win it once, in in theory. And But the one time you did it, it's going to be worth the amount of money you put in for all the other times. So it's going to work itself out. So I'm going to make that call. The pot's going to go up to let me here, 100, uh, 180, 200 total. And then, boom, six, magically. Um, uh, two, three, four, five, six. I have a straight. I have the nut straight, actually. The stone cold nuts. Nothing can beat me. There's no flush draw. Again, if you ever want to make sure, if you you raise heavy, you think someone you got a good hand, and someone re raises you all in. Again, they could be bluffing. It depends the type of player. They could act like they're bored at the table or something. But if you ever need to decide, if you have the stone cold nuts, I have a straight right now. So you got to evaluate every hand that could be better than yours. So one up to that is a flush. There's no three suit on the board. The closest is two hearts, queen and two of hearts, flush is impossible. To have a full house or quads, there needs to at least be a paired board. There's no two cards the same, two, three, six, nine, queen. Full house and quads are out of the window. And then again, straight flush and royal flush are the only last two you can analyze. And both of those also require at least three of a suit on there. And, you know, a royal flush obviously includes at least three of the ten queen, or ten jack, queen, king, king king ace cards on the board so you guys know what that means so I have the stone cold nuts so if I raise and he bluffs me all in it should be a snap call you know as long as I should maybe take another peek at my hand no hand could beat mine four or five you know he could have a two pair he could have pocket nines a set my straight beats three of a kind he could have six queen my straight beats two pair I have a stone cold nuts I should be willing to call anything if I want a Hollywood at this point which if you guys don't know what the term means it's pretty self-explanatory it means act like Again, you don't want to act too, like, out, like I told you before, that guy sitting here, you know, if I'm like this, you know, like, tab my hand, a little worried like this, you know, you're just giving it away. You're, you might as well just tell everybody at the table that you have a monster hand. You don't want to be too over-aggressive about it, you know, you want to make sure the person's paying attention to you, you know, maybe kind of go like this, um, another tell, I'll t tell you right now, you know, maybe I'd increase my blink rate to try and fool them. When someone's lying to you, they start uh, blinking faster. You know, my normal blink, blink rate, maybe, you know, I'm blinking once every two seconds, kind of like this. You know, when I'm bluffing, I'm, I'm kind of just, my, your mind just kind of subconsciously worries, you know. I'd start blinking more like this, maybe looking down, trying not to pay attention. But you'd see in the video I'm doing that. Also, if you guys ever heard of the term, term hooding, sorry, I'm kind of going into tells, but I feel like it's important for this right now. Well, maybe not right now, but so you're just getting a tell right now. Even though this isn't a tell video, I'll do a whole topic on that, really probably two, three videos, there's a ton of stuff you can look at that at the end of the day, you know, people are always like, oh, poker is so much, or Texas hold them so much luck, but you can watch some pro hands, I, it, it's, I can't, I can't put people on exact hands, I can give, I, I mean, I've done it a couple times, but pros are sitting there, you know, every street of information, they get information based on someone's betting pattern, how much they're betting, what they do with their chips when they put them in, you know, do they splash the pot, do they throw them in nice and straight, you know, and by the turn of the river, sometimes they can put them on exact hands. I've seen people call out that this guy has a set of aces. This guy's got eight, nine of clubs for a straight flush. It's so you, you can you can read people. Obviously, there's there's tells people just do subconsciously that you could you can't really control most of the time. So again, uh, hooding as I was saying, it's just like an elongated blink. Like if I'm kind of going like this, 
kind of like almost falling asleep for a sec. Like I kind of look at my cards and I'm kind of thinking about it. Maybe I don't know how long I'm doing it, but my, because my eyes are closed, it's kind of just like a, you just kind of blink for an elongated period of time where you're kind of hesitant as a bluff. So again, you have to know how good your player is if you're trying to trick him into a call because you're doing tells that would appear that if he knew if he was a good player, he would know that this is most likely a bluff. If he's an amateur player, you don't want to be doing that because, you know, he's not going to pick up on it or whatever, and it might just confuse him and everything. You know, you gotta definitely got to know who you're playing against. But whatever. I would act, you know, if I was making a bet, you know, pots, what, 200 exactly. Let's say I bet, you know, 45 or 50 because I might think his hand's not that strong. I want him, want him, I want him to pay me off. I want him to call this bet because I have the stone cold nuts. He raises me all in as I'm getting it, giving him some mixed signals or whatever, you know, some interesting tells or bluff tells, and he goes all in, I should be a snap call because no hand beats me. I flip over four or five, not even that straight. So I know I went a little bit off pot odds there, but I just told you guys a lot of knowledge and a lot of tricks to uh, Texas Hold'em. So um, we'll go on to maybe a full house. I'm not sure. Let me cut this video here and we'll see. <laughs> all right, so we're going to do a more... Old, or not the more old fashioned, but the one people don't think of the full house, you know, where you have the pocket pair and the board pairs for you. So we're going to say he has a good hand. We're going to make the pot real big this time. We're going to say everybody put in their, let's say everybody, there's five players again. Let's say everybody put in, I'm going to keep the pot back here this time. Everybody put in uh, their 50, or no, their, their 40. So there's 80 in there, four other players. I'm sitting here with pocket kings. I definitely want to raise. I'd put in. Let's say a min raise would be 40. I'm going to put in 60. A raise, or a raise of 40. Sorry, min raise would be 20. But I'm going to put in a raise of 60. So now 140s in the pot. This guy's actually got a real hand. So he would actually call me or re-raise me, whatever. Let's say he let's say he just calls me. Just so it's a decent sized pot. So 60, 40. Everybody else folds. So now the pot is put in sex 5. So you guys can really count on yourselves. The pot's 200 pre-flop. Only me and him in it. Okay, so yeah, I will do a, a full house demonstration. Most of these examples, I don't know if I'll do anything more with like certain hands, but straight flush and full house are the ones you know that I'm mainly going over because those are the ones where you can win a lot of money and lose a lot of money. Obviously, your money risk is, you know, if it, you don't win the hand, it's in the pot and it's somebody else's. So that's why I'm focusing on the bigger hands because a lot of times a lot of chips are going to the pot, which, you know, if you're playing for money, obviously you want all the chips. So that could be a big swing and who's going to win all the money at the end. But, uh, you, you know, I, I, you could do odds for, like, if, you, if I have a two pair, what's the odds of a full house? You know, just like I said, as I did in the hand odds before, you're going to want those odds, as I'll say in the chart there. That, that's very slim. Basically, you shouldn't have to calculate those too much. If Say there's 100 in the pot and I have a two pair. If, when I have a two pair, and we'll say a super good read on somebody, I'm not going to think I'm beat, you know. I mean, depending on some, how someone's betting, I might think it's a good hand, but... Say I know, like I'm 99% sure, I've seen this guy bet when he has sets before, you know, he might have pocket fours and there's a four on the board or some pocket pair and he has three of a kind and my two pairs in flames. If I'm super certain about that, that's when, you, again, you take pot odds into, into, into account. you got to make sure that you're beat if you're calling for pot odds. If you know you need this flush, you know that's when, you know, if he has a straight, like I said, that first him, I know I'm probably beat right now. All I have is ace high when I had ace six of hearts and four hearts. Um, you're going to want to, you know, only make that call assuming that you need that card to win, you know. Um, otherwise, if you think you have the best hand before and you're still trying to factor in pot odds, that's not necessarily going to be correct because you still, you don't need that exact amount, of, that exact percentage to have the best hand, you know. I could pair an ace, you know, and that could give me the winning hand, or I could, you know, maybe even a six would give me a winning hand. Maybe he was bluffing the whole time. Maybe he had, maybe he had four high. So, you know, pot odds are best to consider Main number one when you're the last one to act because like I said if there's a hundred in the pot everyone called the blinds like this whatever again a hundred in the pot five chips um, and I'm first or I'm second to act someone puts in twenty no no say uh, forty okay and I have a flush draw like I did before mathematically with pot odds again where it's difficult is if he put in forty there'd now be one forty in there. And technically, again, on flush draws, you want at least four to one to call for the next card. Exactly, I'm talking about the exact next card. So you want four to one to call. And if there was one forward in the pot and I had to risk 40, technically it wouldn't be worth it because I want at least four to one, which would need to be at least a pot of 160. But there's three people to act behind you. And if 
just one of three players threw in their 20, that would bring up the pot to 160, and it would give you exactly four to one odds. If two to players threw it in, you know, you'd be better odds, so it would definitely be worth the call. You cut, again, it all comes down to reading the other players, what they're going to do behind you, you know, if they have their hand on their chips, looking what, like what they're going to do. So again, pot odds, especially if you're kind of a beginning player, don't worry about it too much. If you're second to act and there's eight players behind you, you don't know exactly how much money is going to go in the pot, you know, at, at the end. Someone could re-raise and it might get more expensive. So really only use this as I do. I would use it if, I only use it if I'm last to act um, or I'm sure that, you know, I'm second last to act and this guy's going to fold or whatever. Um, but that's really the only time you can use pot odds to be precisely correct.